The ancient city of Pompeii, entombed by a catastrophic volcanic eruption in 79 CE, has always fascinated historians and archaeologists alike. But recent DNA findings are revealing secrets that shake our understanding of its people and their origins. Pompeii is famously known for being a past Roman town that is about 14 miles from modern-day Naples in Italy. It was destroyed by the 79th Common Era by a Plinian eruption of Soma Vesuvius, also known as the Pompeii eruption. The city was buried under a deposit, laid down during the early phase of the eruption, followed by ash deposits from pyroclastic currents during a later phase. Although a tragedy, the volcanic eruption ironically preserved certain human remains in a horrifying fashion, as well as preserving some items that gave us a peek into the Roman life of that time. It was forgotten and lost to history until it was rediscovered in the 1700s. Its unique preservation and the insight it provides into daily life in the Roman Empire have led to Pompeii becoming one of the world's best-known archaeological sites and being designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The earliest stable settlements in the Gulf of Naples in the Iron Age, IA, date to the 8th century BCE, when the Asi built houses near the estuary of the River Sarno on a small hill, representing the remnants of multiple local volcanic vents rising on the surrounding Sarno Plain. Due to its strategic location, Pompeii became an important road and port trading city. The Greeks, Etruscans, and Samnites all attempted to conquer Pompeii with it ultimately becoming a Roman colony. The 79 CE volcanic eruption completely destroyed Pompeii, but the deposits that blanketed the city preserved its buildings, streets, and artifacts. Many bodies were also preserved, as were the art, jewelry, book rolls, and other cultural remnants of the inhabitants. During the excavations that began in 1748, numerous victims, both isolated and grouped, were found in the houses and in squares, gardens, and streets just outside the city walls. Archaeologists at the time would make assumptions regarding these victims, such as assuming one of the remains was a woman because it was found near two children that however proved to be false as we will later show. According to a recently released study, Pili et al., ancient DNA challenges prevailing interpretations of the Pompeii plaster casts, current biology 2024. Some genetic information was extracted from the human plaster casts using enrichment of ancient DNA extracts from mitochondrial DNA and more than a million single nucleotide polymorphism SNP targets. This study was able to extract DNA from bone fragments, making it more accurate than previous studies. Five individuals were able to be tested for their genetic ancestral makeup. The results will shock you. Firstly, there was an incorrect assumption regarding four remains in the House of the Golden Bracelet, where there seems to be an adult figure laying down and holding two children nearby, as another adult figure is also present. Initial assumptions thought that the figure lying down was a woman and the mother of the two children, while the other adult was the father of the family. However, after sequencing the DNA, it was found that the individual laying down was a male likely of North African origin, and that the two children who are also males are not related to him. The other adult figure was also found to be a male unrelated to the other three. It is important not to make any assumptions as some are beginning to imply that this finding may point to non-traditional family structures present in Pompeii, where a same-sex couple possibly adopted the children. However, this would purely be an assumption as it is just as likely that the four people simply were embracing each other while trying to save themselves from the tragedy without having had any previous connections to each other. There was a similar situation with two remains found in the house of Cryptoporticus, where it appeared that two women were embracing each other. Many have thought that it may have been two female friends, sisters, or even lovers embracing each other. However, it turns out that one of the remains was a male, and the two samples are also not related to each other. This can also mean that there are many possibilities for the nature of their relationship, and we shouldn't make assumptions yet. Where we do have a much clearer image is in the ancestral genetic composition of these victims and their origin will surprise you. 
These individuals do not resemble modern day Italians and also do not resemble Italian populations from the Iron Age, Late Iron Age, and Imperial period Etruscans. This is similar to the results found of the Imperial Roman population of Central Italy and the single individual from the Pompeii disaster who was analyzed and genotyped previously. For each of the samples, ancestry related to Anatolian Neolithic farmers and or Levantine pre-pottery. Neolithic farmers composes the largest ancestral proportion, 48% to 75%, whereas the second largest ancestry comes from the Neolithic farmers of Iran at 26% to 45%, with exception of one individual who can be modeled as deriving 65.3% of his ancestry from Levantine farmers and 34.7% from Bronze Age, Steppe Yamnaya, Proto-Indo-European nomads, a source of ancestry which wasn't found in the other Pompeii individuals. This admixture makes him the only individual somewhat close to modern Italians. Two other remains can be described as composed of around 62% to 69% Anatolia Neolithic farmer and 31% to 38% Neolithic farmer from Iran ancestry making it likely that they originated from Anatolian and Aegean provinces of the Roman Empire. Another individual, meanwhile, has no Anatolian Neolithic farmer ancestry. Instead, he can be modeled as deriving 57.7% and 42.3% of his ancestry from Levantine farmers and Neolithic farmers from Iran, respectively. This admixture makes this individual closest to modern-day Levantine populations and suggests a recent Levantine origin for him or his direct ancestors. The fourth sample can only be feasibly modeled with Egyptian ancestry, making up the largest portion of his ancestry at 51% to 73%, suggesting the actual source is genetically similar to the one represented by the Hellenistic Egyptian individuals. This individual was also found to have minor sub-Saharan African ancestry as well. The final individual can be modeled in two different ways. In both of the models, the largest proportion of ancestry is accounted for by the combination of components derived from Neolithic farmers from Iran and Anatolia Neolithic farmers, 69% to 88% and 84% to 97%, respectively. The third component is derived either from Neolithic farmers from the Levant with 21.2% or Chalcolithic individuals with North African ancestry with 9.8%. The one individual previously found in genotype was found to have 73% to 84% of ancestry come from the Lebanon source and with the rest of his genome being European. All of these individuals with the exception of one cluster closer to Mediterranean, Levantine, and North African Jewish populations. This follows the trend of the later Roman Empire, where the Italian peninsula became extremely diverse, due immigration within the empire, as well as trading cities attracting merchants from all over the empire.